Hello, this is the third and final screencast of the implementation plan. This is part three, and in this capacity, I will be speaking as the pragmatic dreamer. I want to discuss the implementation plan and be a little bit more realistic about the things that I would like to try moving forward in the next couple of years. Now, I only have one prep. I teach U.S. history, and as a result, the implementation plans I have may not be as extensive as the example that was given by Dan McDowell that some of you may have seen uh, that has two preps. So mine may be a little bit different, but nonetheless, I feel that it is adequate, that it is going to accurately outline uh, what I uh, would like to try to accomplish in the next couple of years. Uh, with respect to technology in my classroom. Now, the implementation plan uh, going forward for this year, this will be the 2016-2017 school year, I want to start out by saying that we are in an online school. I teach in an online school. So really, substitution is a given as far as technology, as far as lessons and instruction. All we do is use technology in my school. Uh, we already have a platform for submitting assignments, for uh, looking at lessons, for doing research, uh, for live instructional sessions. Um, we have all that, similar to what you might have with Google Groups or what have you. The key for me will be making use of tools outside of the online platform that we're already using in my school. For example, there's a couple of things I'd like to try. One thing I want to do is use Socrative.com in my online sessions, like in the live sessions, rather than the polling tools or other things that are uh, available in Blackboard Collaborate. I would like to use Socrative.com and have them answer questions there in order to uh, gather data on student learning, you know, instantly gather data, check for understanding, that kind of thing. Uh, perhaps I could even implement a, a, a quiz right there in the live session online through Socrative.com. Now, in the past, I have assigned PowerPoint presentations to assess learning. Instead of, you know, for example, instead of having my students write an essay, what I've done is I've had them present their material in the form of a PowerPoint and then submit it to me. But I'm going to use Prezi.com instead. Now, this is a web 2.0 tool that has actually never been used in my class. So that's one thing I want to do. So these are a couple things I'd like to try for the 2016-2017 school year. Now, moving ahead, looking at the 2017-2018 school year, again, I want to emphasize we are an online school. Because I work in an online school, substitution is a given as far as lessons and instruction. And again, the key for me will be making use of tools outside of the platform we use in our school. And again, I would like to use Socrative.com again in this year uh, to gather data on student learning, and I'd like to use the tool to engage students beyond what I have in Blackboard Collaborate. I will be trying that again. Again, I want to assign Prezi to make uh, presentations instead of PowerPoint. And again, that's a web 2.0 tool. However, in that year, I want to go a step further. And I'd like to require my students to do a screencast in which they would present their Prezi as opposed to just submitting it to me directly. Uh, what I would do is I would access their YouTube channel and I would grade it. And again, their presentation would contribute to the knowledge of the world. It would be broadcast for everybody to see. Now, this is my moonshot idea. And I can tell you, because I have students scattered all over the state and we are an online school, uh, this particular idea is going to be very difficult to achieve. However, it's just a dream of mine. What I would love to do, I would love to have an in-person gathering of all my constant students uh, where we would exhibit their screencasts. We would watch them. Uh, before the entire class. In other words, uh, each student would get up and uh, maybe uh, play their screencast and answer questions. 
you know, afterward. We would watch it, and the student would be on hand to, any, to answer questions, you know, from the audience about their presentation. And obviously, this would require all students to be local, and I have to find a way to compel them to show up. And frankly, with 150 students, I, I don't know how I would make this doable. But again, it's just a moonshot idea, just something I'm thinking of. And of course, I'm always thinking as I move forward in the years to come about PLN expansion. One of the things I'm going to continue to do for my own professional development with respect to technology is I'm going to continue to follow my Feedly feed. I'm going to continue to access those Google groups for ideas on how to improve my teaching. I'm going to take advantage of the professional development opportunities that my school offers, both online and in person. And of course, I'm always going to be looking for professional development leads on social media. And I'm going to add even other professional development leads in person. I'll be looking for that too. That's it. That concludes part three. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching.